Crossbill. The crossbill is a bonny bird and she sings with a good Scots tongue. Jip, 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 I'll gi ye jip, can ye meddle wi me nor my young. The crossbill is a braw like bird and she dines on the cones and the nits. Her neb is unique with a cross hour cleek and the heath pine croons for she flits. The crossbill's a hame fairin' bird, and she trills her dewy sang by the hilltops of Stralach, or by wild foaming Falloch, content it to bide season lang. Hello, my name's Hamish MacDonald. I'm the author of. Wilson's Ornithology and Birds and Scots, published by Scotland Street Press, March 2020. Poems by Hamish MacDonald, illustrations by Alexander Wilson, and featuring uh, an introduction by Paul Walton, who is the Head of Species and Habitat at RSPB Scotland. I first learned of Alexander Wilson when I worked as the Scots Screever at the National Library of Scotland. This was a two-year post, a residency in the National Library that was set up by the Scottish Government and Creative Scotland to help to try and enhance public understanding of the Scots language. And as part of that, the idea was to share, both online and in printed media, some of the amazing collections that were in the National Library of Scotland. And... This book happened a few years later. We initially published some postcards uh, with my poems alongside uh, Wilson's amazing illustrations. So this is the event for Book Week Scotland on behalf of Nest Book Fest. And this was initially going to be an outdoor event. We were going to go down to Merkinch Nature Reserve in Inverness Adults, bairns, we were going to go bird watching, we were going to take binoculars, we were going to write poems, we were going to have a workshop, we were going to have a treasure hunt, and of course COVID intervened and the restrictions came. So this film is part of the what would have been the outdoor event. So as part of this wee movie, we're going to go down to Na Merkins Nature Re Reserve read a couple of poems, see if we can uh, capture a few birds as well while we're down there. So Alexander Wilson, who was Alexander Wilson? Well, that's an amazing story. How did this lad for humble beginnings in a wee town in the west of Scotland become the founding father of American ornithology? Well, we're going to learn some of Wilson's story as we go. And um, Alexander Wilson was born in 1766 in the town of Paisley in Scotland and at an early age his family lived in Auchinbathy Tower in Loch Winnock in Renfrewshire and Alexander as a young lad kept watch over cattle for the family and he herded cattle and he used to also shoot game for the family table and he was also a keen uh, young poet, he wrote poetry from a very early age. His first poems are known from at the age of 13. So Alexander Wilson was, as well as becoming the founding father of American ornithology, first and foremost a Scots poet. And that's why the, the main reason I initially featured them uh, as part of the project at the National Library. Now, Alexander Wilson didn't have much of a formal education. His family couldn't afford that. He went to Paisley Grammar School for about five years and then he was at the age of 13 became an apprentice weaver in Paisley. Paisley being a major uh, mill town and textile manufacturing town. 
He stuck to the weaving for about 10 years and became a part-time weaver and also a part-time packman, what was known in Scotland as a packman, which was somebody, what you would call a peddler, somebody who went round the, the countryside with their goods on their back, selling their goods to the local farm towns, to the local communities. And as part of this venture, he also got some poetry published and would promote his poetry while he was on his uh, Pac-Man adventures as well. In about 1790, he returned to um, Paisley to become a weaver again in Paisley. And this was a time when radical politics were very much to the fore in Scotland and, of course, throughout Britain and throughout Europe as well, particularly for the universal franchise and for workers' rights. And Alexander Wilson, like most of his compatriots in the working classes, became fairly radicalised and he used his poetry as a weapon against the industrialists. He was arrested for writing satirical poems about the Paisley mill owners and their uh, malpractices and exploiting the workers. And he was put into Paisley Tollbooth Jail on a couple of occasions for writing satirical poetry. And in 1794, he was um, jailed again for circulating literature for the Friends of Liberty and Reform. So he found himself in quite a lot of trouble with the authorities as a poet and as a satirist. So probably somewhat wisely in 1794, Alexander Wilson, who had been born in Paisley in 1766, set off on his journey to America. First to Belfast from Port Patrick, walked to Port Patrick, the southwest of Scotland, over to Belfast, then over to America, to Delaware, and eventually to settle in Philadelphia. So we're going to learn a bit more about the story of Alexander Wilson as we go, but before we do that, Let's take a wee uh, journey, a wee recce down to Merkinch Nature Reserve. Here are a few poems for the book and see if we can observe any bird life while we're down there. Let's have a wee trek down to Merkinch. The heron. The heron stalks the lanely streams, feeding on minnows and fishermen's dreams. Stiff as a statue, sealant and slee, he'll ding with his spear in the blink o' an ee. As wide in pud up pecks for a breath, then oars to the deep to avoid certain death. Through fairy moss tendril and murky lagoon, Jink in the dabs of the whaler's harpoon. The heron flees hame with a richt puggled strake, high up in the branches to scroch and to scrake, and the heron reclachin crack news of the day and tell tales of yins that go away. So when I mentioned coming down to Merkinch to capture a few birds, of course I didn't mean actually capture them, I meant on the camera or on the binoculars and uh, managed to see quite a few species in the way along. Um, so uh, red shank, oyster catcher, cormorant, heron, hoodie craw on the path itself, there was what you would normally see in the trees, there was robin, there was blackbird, there was rook. And along at the inlet, at the reserve, I think I saw some widgeons. I need to try and get a wee closer look uh, at the photos later on. There was a bit of a glare. Um, there was certainly widgeons here earlier in the year. Um, also saw some nice red-necked phalaropes here. I've seen um, kingfisher a 
along at the reserve as well, not in this particular walk, but um, actually the kingfisher was just a few weeks ago. So that's, you can see an amazing number of species just in that short walk from the old ferry to Clachnahari Sea Lock, where I am now. Capturing birds was something Wilson actually used to do himself. He used to shoot them uh, so that he could study them scientifically and also illustrate them uh, more accurately. And he also used to capture uh, live birds. He once caught a, a parakeet, which he called Paul, and kept in his shoulder as he travelled thousands of miles through America. And he also winged a, what was an ivory-billed woodpecker, now an extinct species. Uh, he took the ivory-billed woodpecker, he put it in his jacket and rode on horseback to Wilmington where he stayed in a hotel room and he had to go out in the evening probably to try and get subscribers for his ornithological works and when Wilson came back to the hotel room he had tied the woodpecker with a piece of string to its leg and the other piece of string to the table and it had pecked through the table leg and also pecked through several holes in the wall right down to the laths and the plaster. So that was Wilson's capture of his ivory-billed woodpecker. That's me now back at the start of the walk at Merkinch down at the old ferry and where I saw a couple of cormorants when I got here. So I'll do the cormorant poem, the Brongi. The Brongi stands upon the rock abin the cold grey sea whilst clakin' tails are racks and gales with a glint in its sapphire e. The brongy stones with outstreached wings as the salt brack socks and scales with a blustery wind in her pip mark plume that dudders the gay ship's sails. The brongy loops frae stob and stain where the lanely bellboy tolls to soum and sweep through the briny deep in the reeve of the cellar shoals. The brongy sprackles hamework with its thrapples stap at foo for the younkers to dine in white dickies so fine at the cormorant's rendezvous. When Wilson got to America, he found work as a weaver and he also found work as a teacher. And he actually hated the teaching profession so much that he wrote a poem about how much he detested it. So it was probably quite fortunate that he moved to Milestown in Philadelphia County and by chance lived next door to a famous naturalist called William Bartram. And Bartram must have seen a bit of promise in Wilson as an illustrator and as a lover of nature. And he got Wilson work on what was called the Rees Encyclopedia, 
where he became a compiler. So Wilson learned how to study and compile work scientifically. And he set off on several epic journeys on foot and on horseback, usually on his own, across America, what was then America, uh, before the West was opened up. So that was anywhere from the northeast of America down to Louisiana. And he was all the while seeking subscriptions for his his magnum opus that he was going to present to the world of all the bird life that was known in America. So it's quite an amazing story and there's a lot more to it obviously but we'll just give so much here because now we're going to go down to Loch Ruthven which is about half an hour away by car and Loch Ruthven is actually an RSPB nature reserve. Um, it's presently open at the moment but the bird hide is locked so the path's open and the car park's open but the bird hide is locked so we'll get access to the RSPB reserve at Ruthven and we'll see what's going on on the water and on the banks. Ruthven's famous for Slavonian grebes. It's also a great place to see ospreys in the spring and summer and late summer. Uh, sandpipers, a lot of raptors there. This year there was a white-tailed uh, eagle. Buzzards, red kites, kestrels, sparrowhawks. So a fantastic array of species at Loch Ruthven. This being the winter, it'll be quite different, but I'm hoping that will be quite a bit of uh, wintering wildfowl. So let's take a wee jaunt down to Ruthven and see what we can see. Aye, so I've come to Loch Ruthven. There's not too much happening here at the moment. Um, there seems to be a wee bit more activity on the other side of the loch. Could head over there in a wee while and uh, have a look. Stopped off at Loch Brynn in the way here and there was mallard, there was widgeon, there was some other wild fowl that took off. I didn't get a chance to actually see what they were. And there's a few birds flitting in the trees here that I've not been able to identify either. So Loch Ruthven is famous for breeding pairs of Slavonian grebes. People come from all over the world to see them. There's something like 40% of the UK population of Slavonian grebes. And if you get a chance to see their courtship display, that's an absolutely amazing sight. So in the absence of uh, bird life on this side of the loch, what I'll do for the moment is... I'll uh, read a poem for the book, and this is one of the most common sights in Loch Ruthven in the earlier part of the year, and this is The Little Grebe or The Small Duca. The Small Duca, Little Grebe. <clears throat> the Small Duca bides among the reeds, bigs her nest through the watery weeds, babs and jukes when a mate comes cawing. Pleeps and trills in the day that's dawn. Dukes an eth the lochin for the mealtime catch. Water gollock birdie in the may flea hatch. Scudding doon through ben mast nooks. There's nane can duk brawer than the small duker dukes. So I've come over to the other side of the loch, there's a fairly big flock of wintering wildfowl, I'd say about two or three hundred in number, mostly mallard, uh, there might be a few other um, types of ducks among them, so maybe one or two shapes and colours that are distinct for the mallard but they're too far out to see them now. So what we'll do is I'll sit here for a while and see if they drift in further towards the shore. Another thing that Ruthven's known for is a species called the grasshopper warbler and quite a secret of an elusive bird. They tend to flit among the rushes and they've got a distinctive call called reeling. I've never actually seen one. So I'll wait here for a wee bit, see what drifts in, see if there's any to report.
So the Dukes came in a bit, uh, maybe not quite as much as I'd have hoped. Reckon there's a couple of widgeon in there. Mel widgeon, Russet Heed, White Mark at the back of the wing, White Mark at the tail. It's November, it's uh, late afternoon, I don't think we're going to see any more the day. This has been my first kind of real attempt at photographing birds in the wild. Borrowed a camera off my other half, Kim. I've been using the phone, got a audio tripod, what I've been using today. So, probably goes to show that if I can do this, most anybody can do it. And this has been Loch Ruthven, November 2020. I think it's time to head home. Thank you.